Well, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, on this one, I'm going to take a Raspberry Pi, which I currently have set up on my bench here. It's connected to a monitor, which I'll show in a minute. Working fine, I have a mouse and keyboard on it. I'm gonna take this Raspberry Pi, it's a Model 5, by the way, and I'm gonna put it into this case from Gallagher. It's a touch screen case that is fully self-sufficient. It includes uh, all of the attachments on the outside. It includes the, um, the power supply, which I'm not sure if it's gonna be powerful enough. That's why I went ahead and bought a second one, which has more current capability to it. But we're gonna try the one that comes with this first and see if that works. If not, I'll upgrade it. But I'm gonna take this Raspberry Pi and put it into this case. And that's the objective of this video. So let's get started. Let me show you the screen of the Raspberry Pi as it's working right now. So right here is the Raspberry Pi. I have the mouse on it. I can move the stuff around. I obviously have it on my channel right now. You can see what it's doing. And so let me turn the overhead on and uh, put this thing inside the case, okay? Okay, I have the Raspberry Pi shutting down. And then once that's accomplished, I will go ahead and unplug it and disconnect everything. But while it's doing that, this case from Gallagher is supposed to support everything from a Raspberry 3B to a Raspberry 5. So we'll open up and see the different adapters it probably has to include in order to accomplish that. Okay, we're fully disconnected now. So let me go ahead and push this aside and we'll see what's in the box. Well, user manual. It has to support all the different pies. So it looks like they have a, a different section in here, a nice color brochure type for the different Raspberry Pis that you could put in here. So I see the 3B, the 4B, and the 5. So obviously we're gonna be interested in putting it according to the 5. Okay. First things first, so oh, the actual screen should be connected already, and it is. It's correct, connected to the rest of the case. Let's see, how does this open here? There we go. That way we could take it and put it down like this and have it viewable once it comes up. So that's for that. Here looks like a, a bunch of accessories to it. What's in here? Looks like they're giving us the power supply at this point. Yep. My only concern is whether it has enough current in it to support both the Raspberry Pi 5 and also the monitor itself, which includes sound and everything else that goes along with that. Put that aside over here. We have, looks like some side fillers. Maybe there's part of it that's not included or has to, yeah, this thing here, we can replace it depending, I guess, on uh, which Raspberry Pi we're using, right? That's my guess. Bunch of little adapters for the USB and so forth. Let me open this up. Empty it out. So it's got something that goes into the USB and also is a connector here. So my assumption is that that's going to connect to some internal circuit board on there. And then it's got different connectors, I guess, to provide the power. Also connecting each one of these to the actual circuit board that's probably inside of that case. At least that's what the pictures show. I printed out a, a full-size copy of the manual from online so that I have a bigger picture of it all. And I made it so that all the different pieces, so I've already looked at all this and you can see it has a different H, HDMI adapters, the USB, micro USB, so forth. And at the different brackets, depending on what Raspberry put, you're putting in there. One is for the three or the five, and then one is just for the four. That's what it looks like here. Okay. So what else they give us? I'll start with this count cable. Uh, it's a USB, hmm, USB type A to USB C. Okay, we'll see what that's for. We have this cable here. 
actually it's two cables, a screwdriver and, a, and two little cables in here and a couple of screws that are now have fallen out. So hopefully that's not a problem. I didn't lose any. I'll look around in a moment. So we got a screw bear, a screwdriver, a small one, some screws. We got this cable here. That's oops, this cable here. Break this one open. Okay, there we go. And that's regular HDMI cable, it looks like. Yeah, regular HDMI. Nothing fancy there. Okay. So that's what it comes with. So let me get ready to open up this case. It looks like it has one, two, three, four, five, six screws here that I have to remove. And then we can, hopefully the whole back pops off. Okay, let me get the screwdriver. I like to use my small screwdriver set. That way I know it works properly for me. I push this aside carefully. I don't think any of the screws fell out. Oh, this one's still in the bag. So four makes more sense than three. So now we have four of those little screws there. I'll open up these plastic pieces too. Get them laid out. And it looks like there's two of them here. One is like a blank, no cutouts. I guess you cut out your own. And then this is, uh, I guess, one for uh, one of the other pies. I'm not sure which one. Let's see if it's labeled. Oh, it says Pi 4 on there. So if you look very carefully at the bottom label here, it says Pi 4. So I guess it's already got Pi 5 in there. Let's see. Yes, it looks like it. Oh, it has Pi 3 in there. Pi 3 and Pi 5 are the same, so we should be okay. So let's put this over here. Let's take these screws out. I'll probably be zooming ahead a lot on this. Okay, that's the six screws now. Let's see, does this come off? I'll close this for now. I don't need that up. Does this pop open? Yeah, the whole pop, the whole back. Oops. There was a warning in the manual about the fan and the connector for the fan. So what I'll do is I'll just put this aside for now without damaging it. So it'll be like this. There's a couple of printed circuit boards on there. A lower one and an upper one. There's some connectors in here. Yep, this one says power in connector. Okay. Okay, let me, uh, let me look at the instructions and see exactly what I have to do there. Okay, looks like there's some instructions here to talk about how to deal with some screen setups. That's on the actual screen itself on the other side of this. So it looks like they want it set up in a certain way. You can turn the fan on or off from the screen. What is this? Fan control, the display fan control. Okay, so these are just the different options. You can change the volume, the dark balance. Okay. The input sources they talk about in here. And then this one here is for the Pi 5. That's what it has up in the corner here, Pi 5. And so they have a, uh, a little connector that has to go on the Pi itself. Let me bring the Pi over to here. Get this a little bit out of the way. And we have to put two connectors on it. One is the HDMI connector. So there's an HDMI connector in here somewhere. This one here says HDMI zero v1 we got to plug that into the hdmi zero over here it looks like it's in notice i have the pi fan already included here hopefully it doesn't get in the way of anything i've also got my little insulator here that allows me to insulate these three metallic cases around the network connector and the usb connectors okay that's something I built on my 3D printer. And then it has over here, we need type C. So you want the type C one. I guess one of these is type C, one of these is not type C. So they want the type C one here. That provides the power to the Pi itself, which comes off of the little board that's in here. The actual connectors that'll go into the board back there are up here. I've already, here's my US SD card, micro SD. Like I showed a moment ago, it's up and running already. So then they say to uh, plug in the other end of the main board. So there's a cable here that we got to plug in. Okay, this cable here, that's clearly for the touch screen. It looks like there's a connector on the main board. I'm assuming that that connector is this one over here and that I'll be using this cable that has the three pin connector on one side and a USB type A on the other to connect those two up. It does show on the board, the top pin is ground. There's a black pin here. I assume it goes that way. So we'll plug it in this way. There we go. Let's see, does that go in there? That definitely goes in there. So now we have this cable connected here. And then they want the other end connected up to the Pi. 
Looks like they're connecting to one of the USB-C connectors. Does it have to go outside the case? Yeah, it does. So this has to come through the other side of the case first. Okay, so we got an opening here that we have to go through in order to get to that. And then we have the network port. Okay, so which opening is that? It's hard to tell from this picture. Let me just pick one. If it doesn't work out, I'll fix it later. Let's plug this guy back in again. There we go, that's in. And then this part, I'll have to plug on the outside once I get the Pi inside. The next is Pi 4, Pi 3, and then that's about it. So I assume that at this point, I'll put the Pi and I have to get these connectors to line up. So hopefully that's not a problem. Oops, they're off a little bit. Let me take my connector off. Maybe that's not gonna work until afterwards, if at all. Let me get that off, because it looks like this may have to go in like this, yeah in order for it to fit. Does this whole thing come up? Yeah, it does. This whole bracket comes up so I can line it up better. Yeah, that's that's in. So it looks like I got those, gotta be very careful. Those pins are very delicate. So that's lined up with that, that's lined up with that. At this point, I think I would just secure the Pi to the inside of the case here. So we got those four screws. They should go probably right into the four Pi holes that go down in here. So with that, this, can I still use my Raspberry Pi insulator? It doesn't fit quite as well, but I'm going to leave it on there for now. I have a little piece of double-sided tape on one of these connect, probably underneath this. And then it says, according to the picture for the Pi 5, it looks like it connect, they connect into one of the USB 3. So we'll take this and connect up to one of the USB 3s. Being a little stubborn. Let's see what we got here. That's USB 3. And it goes in. There we go. All the way in. So now that's all contained. So now, at this point, I should probably be ready to put the back cover back on. That's my guess anyway. I have to open this up again so I can secure the six screws. It has the buttons over here that you have to use for setting the thing up or making, you know, finer adjustments to it later on. Let's see if this thing works. We can put HDMI in here. Look, it's got a full-size HDMI. There's a Type-C connector here and there's a 12-volt connector here. And there's an audio output connector over here. So we'll see what happens. Let me, uh, I'll start by trying to use their, uh, their power supply. See if that works. Might get lucky. And this one has a regular 2.5 millimeter barrel connector on it. Come over here. I already have wireless set up on it. I forgot to mention that before. So I don't need to connect anything to the uh, ethernet, even though it is available here if I wanted to. But basically everything is available except for the internal HDMI. So let me plug this guy in and see what we get. Does the Pi come up? Do I have to power it on? Oh, it's coming up. Something's coming up. Hmm. Is the Pi on? Let's see. There it is. I have the Pi on there. I had to hit that power button separately. Does this work? Let's see. Can I go into the folder? Yeah, I can. It's kind of hard to touch it because I'm going to change the resolution on this because this is just too small to, uh, to do anything with. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but it does work. The touch screen, I can move stuff around. Okay, looking pretty good. Well, I got it working. But in order to do that, I had to connect a mouse and keyboard to it through the USBs. So I have the mouse and a keyboard on here. And then I had to go change the uh, resolution to something that was more viewable on this small screen, which the best one that worked out was 1024 by 600. And it fits in there perfect. Now the touch screen does work, but you know, it probably for something quick, if you have an icon set up and you just want to run it, you'll probably be fine. Otherwise, you should have, if you're going to use this, you should have a keyboard, maybe a mini one, and a mouse available for you to take care of this, okay? But it does work fine. It even has sound. I came over here and I uh, ran the browser, and I could type in YouTube, and I'm going to go to my channel. 
And I could come in here and pick a video or pick a short. Let's see. So as you can see, it works fine. Anyway, I'm going to put it to work now uh, as the uh, Exercise Bicycles little PC. So we can do things, YouTube or whatever, that uh, we want to run from this. Be able to at least watch something and keep us interested while we're trying to exercise. Okay? So thanks for watching. Take care.